I hope you enjoyed that song, a little peppy music, powerful lyrics. Welcome to our Sunday gathering. We're so grateful you're here. I'm joined with my dearest friends, Carrie and Phil, and I'm Sandra. If we haven't met yet, we are into our fifth year of bringing you the Sunday gathering. Never missed a week. We are here to empower, to join the two worlds, to let you know that you are loved, you're one of a kind, you're special, and hopefully to have a big smile on your face during and by the end, really empowering you. And that's our topic today is purpose with passion, living life powerfully, living a life you love. And I think those songs really represented it. So with that, sit back, relax, Who's doing what today? Well, our friends Carrie and Phil will be doing our prayers today. Also their demonstration of mediumship and joining me for our address. I will be doing all these behind the scenes magic with the videos and such, uh, doing the reading for you, the healing, some words for the week, and you never know where else it goes. So we wanna welcome you. We're so grateful you're here. Whether this is your first time or you've been with us before, you are special and that's all I have to say about that. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to one of my friends for the opening prayer, please. Thank you very much, Sandra. It's lovely to be here on this Sunday gathering with a theme that is very close to all of our hearts. And that Natasha Beringfield song used to be one of my favorites. Whenever I was feeling a little bit down, it would remind me to be who I am. So thank you for putting that on. Let us enter into prayer as we begin this Sunday gathering. Divine, ever-present spirit, as we join together within this field of power under the Sunday gathering's banner, we come together as a community, either live here or on recording. Everybody around the world is included within this power. Those joining us, and also those connected to those. But we know the power of this, the healing, the purpose, the joy, and the understanding of life after physical death can touch many more people just by the way we are, the words that we use, and the way that we walk through our lives. So really, the energy of this Sunday gathering will reach much farther than we will ever know. So allow today this theme of purpose to bring us together, to give us that spur to move on, to engage in, to make decisions, to refocus and to walk true in our lane on purpose. Amen. Thank you, Carrie. Beautiful words. Okay, I found a wonderful story or writing by Donna Levy, and it's called How I Found My Purpose, A Personal Story of Transformation. This month, I celebrate my 42nd birthday. Now, I know this may not mean anything to you, but it has great significance for me. As I look back over the past five years of my life, I realize what an amazing amount of transformation I have experienced. I wanted to share my story with you in hopes that at least one person out there will hear it and find the encouragement and inspiration they need in order to become the person they were truly meant to be. Here's my story, she says. After years in the business world, I decided to try my hand at being a stay-at-home mom. Soon I realized that even though I deeply loved my children, this was the hardest job on the planet. With a four-year-old on one hip, a two-year-old on the other, an ailing mother, an elderly father living on his own, and a husband working hard to keep his business going and pay the bills, I lost myself somewhere in between. I no longer had an identity. Who was I? Did I have a purpose outside of being a caregiver? I felt completely drained, used up, a shell of a human being. My mother died later that year and my depression became deeper. I felt terribly disappointed and angry at the way she left me. I was never alone, it seemed, but I felt utterly lonely. My emotions had begun 
had begun to manifest themselves physically. Like clockwork, every month I would get an unbearable strep-like sore throat. Knowing what I know now, I realize it was from not speaking my truth, not expressing my feelings. The following year, my sister asked me to go on a trip with her. She was sure I needed some time for myself. I, of course, was very reluctant to even entertain the thought of traveling with two small children at home. I had responsibilities, and how would my husband feel about the added duties? So after mulling it over for a time, I woke up one morning and made a command decision. I was going. This was my life too. I was going on a trip with my sister after all. Everyone was just going to have to make do with me for just a few days. So she and I went to Canyon Ranch in Tucson, Arizona, and I did some real soul searching there. I searched for a missing piece of myself. I didn't know what it looked like or how to find it. Then one day at the resort, I decided to schedule a service for myself called Healing Touch. For many years, I had been interested in the metaphysical and in spiritual development, but energy medicine was something completely new to me. The process of healing another individual of emotional and physical blockages using only the healing energy inherent in each of our bodies and minds was positively fascinating. After arriving home, I ignored what I had learned on my trip and put the search for my life's path on hold. Subsequently, I became very ill. My doctor prescribed stronger and stronger antibiotics and medicine, but for some reason, I continued to get worse. I was desperate to get well. One night, afraid that I may fall asleep and never wake up, I thought to myself, what if this medicine doesn't work? There must be a way for me to heal my th myself, I thought. At that moment, something miraculous happened. The, in the instant those thoughts poured from my mind, the idea for what became my first book, The Healers, flooded into my mind with rapid fire. So crisp and clear were my visions of the characters, children from various parts of the globe, each with their own healing abilities, teaching others to heal their own lives. In the morning, the details were still so vivid in my head that I was compelled to get to pen and paper. I found what I had been searching for, a greater purpose in life, an identity, a creative outlet to express my true self, a way to spread a message of hope and love to humanity. In a universe of unlimited possibility and abundance, I had attracted what I was ready to receive. So guess what happened? My illnesses and depression were no more. This was my healing, and I believe that following my passion was the conduit for this healing. So what have I learned over the past five years exactly? Well, first, I learned that we all possess a power within us to better our own lives. And yes, attitude is everything. I've realized how desperately important it is to listen to what your life is telling you and to lead the life your heart is begging you to lead. I now understand when it's time to let go and quit trying to control something and instead ask for what you need and be open to the answers that are trying so hard to come to you. And last but not least, I've learned that life is a perfectly orchestrated symphony of good and bad and that every moment presents us with a new opportunity to listen and learn just a little bit more. So that's by Donna Levy. And since that article came out, Donna Levy has now three books in her trilogy called The Healers. Her, and then she also has one more book and it's called Life, Life Scripts, Remedies from One Healer to Another, Step-by-Step -step Prescriptions to Heal Yourself and Manifest the Life of Your Dreams with a workbook included to create a happy, positive you. 
And I just was intrigued by her even more after I read this. And on her Amazon author page, she writes, I sincerely hope that my readers will realize that they have more power than they ever dreamed possible. The infinite power of the universe lies inside each and every one of us. We live on a vibrational planet and all that exists is simply made of energy. Our universe is loving, caring, supportive, and abundant. And I passionately believe that we have the ability to shape our own realities through the focus of our thoughts. And if we hold our thoughts on the positive and we look for the good, our lives will mirror that back to us. And I think Carrie and Phil will agree that, and you folks in the Sunday gathering, that we just couldn't agree more with her words. So the reading leads us perfectly into the healing. And I know she spoke about healing in her article. And we are so powerful and the difference that we can make on planet Earth and the people and places, it's incredible. We don't have to believe it for it to be. So with that, the song I've picked is Tim McGraw's Live Like You Were Dying. It's a song about purpose and passion and living full out on your life, really getting the money's worth out of your life. You know, you are special, you are one of a kind. But as we go into our healing, let us picture, imagine those who need healing, even yourself, happy, healthy, whole and well. And through our feelings, our good feelings, however those in the unseen world use our energy, they really do to direct it to where it's needed and who it's needed and who needs it. And then also anytime we give, we also receive. So after that, you'll hear from Carrie, Phil and myself for the address. Let me find this powerful song for you. I've never heard that song before, Sandra. It's a lovely, lovely song and one that holds all sorts of truths for us. Not that we want to have to experience what that might feel like to live like we were dying, but in all honesty, aren't we all? Isn't that something that's guaranteed since we, take, since we took our first breath? And the thing is, all of us here are here because we're curious about something that happens after we take our physical breath, our last one. All of us are here because we understand what it's like to be curious enough to want to talk about it. But I don't know about you, but it doesn't make for dinner time talk. It doesn't really make for round the table talk. If somebody starts talking about death. Or taxes. Or taxes. <laughs> it's <laughs> Guaranteed in life. It tends to shut the conversation down, doesn't it? But really, it's the one thing that we all have. It's the one thing that we can, in some way, prepare for. And it's the one thing we can do every single day, that preparation. I know that many people will talk about leaving their legacy. Whether that legacy be like Sandra's We Don't Die, whether that legacy is your family, whether that legacy is a business, a way of being, a book, a piece of music, or so many other things that you might be able to influence somebody else to live a better life. That comes down to even being a parent, a sibling, a child, a niece, a nephew, a friend, because our words become our legacy. Our words can help somebody. I was speaking to somebody today about that thing called death that we don't really speak about. But actually, if we get it into context, it allows us to find our purpose again. It's the one thing that can knock us off and I'm sure you know exactly what I'm speaking about. When we experience a loss of any kind, especially the loss of somebody close to you, and especially when that loss is over to the spirit world, 
it can really knock us for six and sometimes take us right off track to the point where we can't even remember what our purpose was, let alone do it with passion. But that's where the people around about us can nurture and support us, can care for us and remind us that this day too shall pass. Not that you will feel too much different, but that you will build a different relationship with how you are interacting with the world. And as you interact with the world, you'll suddenly be able to reconnect with what we call your why. Now your why is something that is personal to you. It is individual. My why will be absolutely no use to you. You can have it, but it will be no use to you because my why is where I go to in those deepest, darkest moments when I can no longer feel what my purpose is due to all sorts of reasons. Also, I've got somebody that says, what's this really about? But just to keep you in check. But my why is as valid as yours. And I know you understand what your why is. You just might not know it. Understanding it is not the same as knowing it. You know that thing in your gut feeling that says, get up in the morning, want to do certain things. You understand the feeling, but you don't necessarily understand how it's there, why it's there, what it looks like or what it's about. I know my why is about being authentic, having integrity, telling the truth. And if I can't tell the truth, strange doom, if it doesn't serve a purpose. You know, if we can't make a change in life, why try to control those things? Life has a funny way of just evolving and growing and allowing things to be exactly as they are. I was speaking to a friend not long ago in Scotland and she said, I'm trying to do this and they're making me feel and they're doing this and I can't focus on, I said, stop. What they're doing has no relevance to you being on purpose. It's a distraction from you being on purpose. They're going to come back around and they will still be there in your life in some way. But staying on purpose sometimes means we catch people when they fall we love them still, we hold them close, but we can't lose track of what our purpose is. You can't lose track of what your purpose is. Now, if your purpose right now is getting through the day, by golly, that's the most decent purpose I've ever heard of today. Because that is a purpose that is genuinely a lifesaver. We know what that feels like. But I guarantee you, at some point, you'll be able to get through today and risk planning for tomorrow. You'll be able to get through today planning for the day after tomorrow. And that spark will come back. That spark of knowing what you want to do, the words you want to share, the difference you want to make, what you want to share with the world what you want your legacy to be, it will come back to you because it never disappears. You always understand it's there. It's just about being honest with yourself and allowing you to have that space to sometimes be off purpose. I know when we get a journey, sometimes that journey's got twists and turns and modes of transport I never aimed to be on. But get on them I do because it takes me on my journey. Purpose is about staying true to you. So if you can't feel your purpose right now, don't worry. It is still there. Your soul knows. Stay in touch with the part of you that's instinctively and intuitionally, I might have reinvented a word, where you are in touch with your intuition. There you go. You can edit that part out. I know 
it's there because I've felt lost at times and the spirit world have never let me down. Trust them. Thank you, Kerry, Sandra. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is a pleasure to be here. And did you know your purpose started the moment you were born? That life started to program you? That life started to mould you? Every interaction that you had has given you purpose. And the ones that we don't want to think about, those negative experience, have given you more purpose than anything else because they're growing pains where we realize truths or we learn truths about life and we react to them and we shape ourselves from the lessons we learn in life. Now, for most of you, you only see me, Kerry, Sandra and Darren here on the Sunday gathering, but we all come from the corners of the world. We all have our own little corners. I came from a little market town nothing really special every now and again a coach came in and brought people to the local market really but really yeah there was nothing really there so i spent a lot of my youth misspent getting up to no good as kids do boys climbing trees and things like that get all those other things out of your mind but actually it's from those lessons that I learned and I became aware of self. I became aware of my integrity, my morals, my ethics, my learnings of right from wrong. And that builds that purpose, builds those truths where you stand up for people that you feel have been either mistreated or wronged in any way. And you start to develop your own truth and where you fit within this world. So everything that you've done, every time you think about where you've come from, every time you have maybe a bad moment or one of those moments you just think, why is life treating me like this? Remember, there is something to learn. Remember that from every aspect, we grow. From every aspect of growth, we get a new insight into life. We start to see those truths. And more importantly, we begin to understand not just self, not just life, but other people. We gain empathy. Every time myself or Kerry or any other medium works, we get an insight into somebody else's life. Every footstep they have taken, every memory they have shared, every moment of joy, every moment of heartache, we learn from, we walk with them. We feel it. And that insight of life allows us to take stock and reflect. Every time that we go through something, we understand the impact it has on ourselves and others around us, our families, our parents, brothers and sisters, and everybody else that we come into contact with, friends and acquaintances. And sometimes people make a wrong judgment, and we don't stand there and say, We told you so. We don't judge them, we empathise with them, we can see why they may have done something. And it's in that moment you think to yourself, wow, maybe five years ago, I wouldn't have sinned like that. Definitely 10 years ago, I wouldn't have looked at life like that. So you start to see where your path is in life. And you start to walk that path. My path from working and living around that market town for me was to see the world, was to get out away from there. A lot of my friends now and people that I knew are in the spirit world from misadventure to all kinds of things. It's not the greatest place to live. There's some really good places, some really nice memories I have, but I wanted to move on. I wanted to explore. And now it's one of my purposes to share those truths I've learned so much of throughout life with people that I meet, within seminars, with on this Sunday gathering, with the people that I interact with. And just in case you can hear the siren, they may be coming from me. No, only joking. It's all those imp impressions we have that create those moralities, if you will, those morals, those ethics. And as we walk through those passions and purposes, we start to see how we once were, but now act in a different way. 
and now step in a different way as well and we go a different journey and it's that that's really important not somebody else's views not somebody else's thoughts or opinions because you can't control them and that's one thing that you will never control you can give them a million dollars and they'll still say thank you very much but they won't change their mind about you but knowing self having a purpose having an intention knowing that you're walking your own truth knowing that you're doing the best that you can is all that matters is all that counts in this world and as long as you know that it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks because you've got your truth your understanding so having a passion having a purpose is not something that is a title it's something that is deep within of who you are your makeup your dna your thoughts your interactions everything that you do speaks of your passion and purpose and one thing i've learned in life more than anything is to be kind to others is to listen is to take on board that it might be their bad day and i'm just on the other end of that bad day so understanding and smiling and saying that's interesting helps me understand what may be going on so if we can be tolerant if we can be kind and if we can be true to who we are with every step we take and always remember there's somebody less fortunate than ourselves then what a better world what a better place and what a better time we would have thank you for listening Thank you, Carrie, and thank you, Phil. Beautiful words. I'd like to share with you just my journey into purpose. And for the first 38 years of my life, I was looking for my purpose. It was out there somewhere, and somebody knew the answer to it. And when I would hear life's purpose, for whatever reason, I thought that meant a job. I don't know if anybody's like me, but it was like, what should I be doing with my life? What is my purpose? So it was back in 2002 that there was a course that actually taught your purpose. I thought, this is for me, this is for me. Power and Contribution, it was called. And we met five weekends in San Francisco. Big, powerful course. People from all over the world came. And so I was ready. I was really ready to find out what it was because in my life, I've had a whole bunch of different jobs, so many different things that I've done but never quite felt like that was the purpose. So this course, it kind of blew my mind because they said, your life's purpose is not a job. It's who you're being. It's who you've been being all of your life. It's what you've been doing. It's the interests that you have. It's the people that you enjoy. So to, for the very first time I thought, Oh, really? And in this course, we had to declare a bold promise to the world. And I know some of you have heard me tell this story, but they thought cre create a problem that's so big and you go out to try to solve it for others. And so we started looking for problems on the earth and some people were really drawn to end homelessness. Some people wanted to have fresh water for people in the world. Some people wanted to end starvation. So we had to look to see what our impossible promise would be. And it's impossible because when you think about it, can we truly clean every bit of water in the earth? Mm, probably not. Can we cure disease or starvation or end homelessness for every single person? Mm, probably not. But by taking action in the direction of that, it gives us purpose. And you've heard of the book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it is all small stuff. When we start looking at the bigger picture, somehow those little things in life that aren't working out kind of take the back seat to what's truly important. And that Tim McGraw song, Live Like You Were Dying, it just struck me in a way that sometimes I think we take for granted the people in our life and how our life is, the home we have, the jobs we have. I don't want to say live like everybody's dying, but don't take them all. Don't believe that they're all going to last forever. I guess that's the way I want to put it. 
instead be gratitude, be grateful for what we have because we don't know when something might change. I guess that's the best way of putting it. And so with that, in that course back in 2002, I had to create my impossible promise. And this advice goes to you as well. Look for who you've already been being, the people that you like to be with, what you like doing, what you like exploring, your interests. And in that, look to see what's there. And in my life, I've always been someone who loves to make a difference with other people, whether I do it on surprise or whether I can just help in some way. I'm someone who's very interested in learning. And if there's a subject that I'm interested in, oh my gosh, the amount of books and research I do is incredible. I'm someone who loves to share. I'm someone who loves play and joy. And at that time, I had just begun with this question about life after death. And it kept kind of knocking at my door. You know, what else is out there? Do we go on? And I started doing, I had taken a weekend course in mediumship and I'd taken a, another course, um, you know, different things. So I thought, well, you know, the thing I'm really interested in right now is this life after death business, you know, is it real? Isn't it real? And somewhere in my soul, I knew it was. So just to do the homework, I put on my piece of paper and had to stand in front of the room of 500 people and declare my impossible promise. And it went something like this. Now we had to give ourselves 25 years, right? So that's quite a bit in the future. And mine was by the year 2027, all people would know that we don't die, that we are souls having a human experience, that our life matters. And while we're here to play, to learn to love and forgive. Those might not be the exact words, but it was something pretty close like that. The course was over, put the notebook in my drawer, and that was it. Now, did I call for the universe to do what it did and have me be on such an exploration that here, gosh, it's almost the year 2027, we have one of the largest afterlife communities going with We Don't Die. Part of the homework was to detail how it was all gonna happen, kind of reverse engineer. And one of the things I said is look for some of the best people in the world that are already sharing this message and join together and be stronger. That it wasn't about competition, it was about joining, joining hands. Each person has a different variety of the message, but join together and share them. So here we are now, just three years away from 2027. I have over 600 hours of episodes interviewing people, like-minded people about sharing about the afterlife. Of course, joined today with my dearest friends, Carrie and Phil, and so much more. And again, did I put that into motion when I made that bold declaration? Did I pick that before I was born? Who knows, who cares? But the fact of the matter is we're all here. So for yourself, oh, let me just back up and say one thing. Living this life of we don't die, that we are these eternal souls having a human experience. I'm not living it 24 seven, I'm still a human. I get caught up in my own ego, I forget, right? But it doesn't take long before I remember and I thought, okay, ego, go back in the back seat. My soul is driving this car called Sandra today. And it is to look through the eyes of love and forgiveness and all those other good things to others and myself included. But what it's done really, just as the course promised is when I look at my life, and again, the small stuff, don't sweat the small stuff. When I think of what is on the horizon, and I don't know if you guys feel it, but I really think within our lifetimes is gonna be that tipping point where more people believe in the afterlife than don't. In fact, right now, I know more people believe in the afterlife than don't, but I think far too many are afraid to voice their feelings based on what other people might think. You know, people might think we're crazy, but I found, I really did, that once I started sharing my truth and what I believe in, most people thought it was pretty darn cool, and most people had their own story to share of why they believed in the afterlife. Now, certainly, there were some 
shall I say, born again Christians that took me aside and prayed for me because I was doing the devil's work and things like that. So I just looked at them through the eyes of love and said, thank you. <laughs> but I stick with my tribe and the tribe is pretty strong and you are here too. So don't be hard on yourself if you're looking for what your purpose is. I just ask that you look to see who, what is it you've always been doing? Who have you always been being? And if you have any problem with that, just ask people in your life who love you, what your positive attributes are. And they'll tell you, you're generous, you're funny, you're loving, you're kind, you're a good listener. And so when you are in that, my friends, you're in your purpose. So that's it for me. Thank you for listening to our address. And now we are going to move on to our demonstration of mediumship. I know we have some first timers here today and also some, I'm not going to call you old timers, but you've been with us since the beginning. Uh, we've completed four years of our Sunday gathering and we are now in our fifth, which is so incredible. But let me just let you know or refresh your memory how this part goes. Carrie and Phil are longtime mediums and to me they're the best in the business. Not only that, they've been teaching mediumship for a number of years and I think you've seen through some of the demonstrations with their students on the Sunday gathering that their method works and it all starts from love and it all starts well, like Carrie said, with integrity, with passion, with purpose, and through that, giving those in the spirit world an opportunity to speak again. You know, we still have modes of communication, whether it's voice, text, emails, and them, not so much. They do their best to come to us in our dreams or put thoughts in our minds, and too often we just chalk it up to our imagination but they work through that brilliant imagination, they do. So to be in a proper medium demonstration, there's nothing quite like it. And as you see Carrie, Phil and myself as the representatives from the human world, we will get a handful of representatives from the spirit world speaking on behalf of all of them. So if you get a reading today, great. If you don't get a reading today, great, because you can really pull in that information of how close they are. And it's no mistake that sometimes those messages or advice that comes out, you think, gosh, I could really use a little bit of that myself. So the spirit world has it planned, who's coming through. But with that, Carrie and Phil will invite the spirit world to work with them. They will use their thoughts, their memories, their feelings, maybe even their sense of taste and smell, who knows? And you'll hear them give a few initial bits of information about the spirit person that has contacted them or is with them. So they'll describe this person to us. We want everybody to be on the edge of your seat and listen in closely because it could be your person. Now, if all this information sounds like you can understand it, but the person is alive, don't raise your hand because these people that are coming through have passed from this world. They could be our friends. They could be our family members. It could be somebody a little bit distant in our lives. Uh, but if you can take 100% of the information as Carrie and Phil describe with the spirit person, we want you to press your raise hand button. Now, where is your raise hand button? You ask, well, go find it on your device and press it. See what happens on your side. You can press it up and down, up and down if you like. It'll go from raise hand, lower hand, raise hand, lower hand. Why is this necessary? Well, because sometimes the initial bits of information that they give, more than one person can understand it. So what you want to do is if your hand's raised and there's more than one of you, Carrier Phil will keep working to identify more information from the spirit person. And if something doesn't apply to you, you can lower your hand. Now we often get well over 150 people in our Sunday gathering. So it's very important that you take all of the information before you press your raise hand button. If nobody raises their hand, Carrie and Phil will do the work and just see what other information they can share. Okay. So like Carrie mentioned, integrity. I tell you, integrity is the basis and should be the foundation for everything. If you have an opportunity to work with Carrie or Phil or any medium, it's so important to let them do the work. They will give information about this person in the spirit world. All we need from you is a yes, no, or I don't know to the information that they give. Now, please don't worry if you, there's a no and something doesn't relate. Just say no. As they teach in their classes, no means new opportunity. 
All right. So don't worry. Yes, no, or I don't know. And just to tell you so often in medium demonstrations and readings, the medium's trying to pull information out from you. And that's not good training. Better to let them do the work so that everybody leaves a demonstration or a reading knowing that the medium was in contact with your loved one that you didn't volunteer the information. Okay, so there's a there's a film going on behind the scenes and Carrie and Phil are part of that with our dear friend Rob really to raise the level of mediumship in the world. Uh, be on the lookout for the film evidence of the afterlife, maybe later this year. We'll see. So with that, we like to play a song before our demonstration. The song we've chosen today is called Stronger by Kelly Clarkson. So we've talked about our purpose, we've talked about our passion, and this has just given you that boost of strength. And while we're listening to it, why not use that power of your imagination and imagine it filled with those that you love, both in this world and in the next world? because that's how they communicate through our imagination. So here is Miss Kelly Clarkson with a stronger. That's one powerful tune. Hello, Carrie. Hello. What a, yeah, it is one powerful tune, absolutely. It is an absolute delight to be here and it feels as if we've not been here for ages but we were here just on the back of a surviving from down under but I know that there are people here that come every single week and we're ever so grateful to be able to be here in your homes today. Today's theme is about purpose and passion and you've heard us all speak about that but I know as I felt the spirit world coming in, I know I felt a young man with me. And I know as this young man connects with me, I, I, I get the strong sense that he was very much driven by his purpose. I do feel that he would have passed in university years or certainly in full-time accom full accommodation, full-time education. But I know he's a bit older. He's not un, He's not a young teenager. He does feel older. And I know he passes very quickly of accidental um, conditions that took him to the spirit world. Does anybody in our audience understand that, Sandra? Thank you very much, Carrie. If you can understand that information, go ahead and press your raise hand button, please. And Carrie, yes, we have several people with their hands raised. Okay, I do feel that he would have been in university. I do feel that there are pictures, very recent pictures before his passing of him in a university um, sweatshirt or a university, um, I don't know what you would call them in the States, but a sweatshirt type thing. And there's a photograph of him with this on. Would that make sense to those people? Okay, thank you. University uh, college sweatshirt or something like that. If you cannot understand that information, go ahead and press your lower hand button. All right, we still have several people with their hands raised. Okay, whoever this young man is for is a very close relationship. So it need to be son, stepson, um, or somebody who was like a son to this person in the audience, because I do know I am extremely close. Thank you very much. We've had a couple hands gone down. We still have three lovely ladies with their hands raised. Okay. And there must have been, with his passing, there must have been some questions unanswered straight away. It feels like there are um, an element of taking time to get all the details together. Ladies, can you understand that? I know we've had some new hands go up, but you will have to take every bit of information that Carrie has shared, not just the last bit. All right, we still have several hands up, Carrie. 
and they can take everything. This would need to be son or stepson, accidental passing. I know he was very, very driven on his purpose. And I know that there is, um, he would have been in university or if that's college, and you would know where this sweatshirt with his university name is on it. Well, I'm going to say your names just in case you have your hand up accidentally. Allison, Sherry, Patricia, and Jane. So just double check if your hand is not meant to be up. Then. One of you also would understand here in the physical the name Dave or David. Here in the physical, not in the spirit world. All right. We have Sherry and Jane. And whoever this David is or David knows your son. Here. I'm watching hands go down. All right, hands are going up and down. Sherry has been remained with us the longest. Okay. Can I speak to Sherry, please? Yes. And everyone else, just stay where you are. Sherry, new friend, if you would press your uh, lower, um, your unmute button. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. Hi. Hi, Sherry. You understand everything I've said? I do. Okay. All I need you to do is to say yes. Is there something else I can do? Sorry about that. That's fine. All I need you to do is just say yes or no, okay? So you understand son in the spirit world? Yes. And you would understand him with the university sweatshirt? Yes. And I, I get the sense with him that he had such a driven nature, but I want to see the driven nature was about doing the right thing. Yes. I know with your son, there's an incredible... um power behind him i actually feel he would have um advocated on behalf of people that were less able yes. he would have spoken on behalf of at university and taken part in debates and such like yes. okay i know with your son too there's i know he's driven but he actually would have been quite liked by the girls as well. Yes. I know we all think our children are good looking, but your son is actually quite a looker. <laughs> I know in the photographs, there would be photographs with him where he wouldn't have long hair, but I know I can run my fingers through my hair. <laughs> I can feel him running his fingers through my hair and he's, his hair was quite soft actually. I know too with your son there is an incredible ability to pull people together so he would have had quite a circle of friends. Yes. And some of his friends would have also been girls but just platonic friends. You understand that? You don't? Yes. You do? Oh, okay. I know with your son there is, when he passed the spirit world, and I don't feel like he wants to dwell here too long, I know there would have been questions or um, a, a need for an investigation into what happened. Yes. And I know there would have been other people that were brought in and assisted with this investigation yes and i get the strong sense he does not want to dwell here sherry but i also know he's not his passing has been um can we ever say a passing is not recent or feel recent but i know his passing to the spirit world feels recent yes and I know his passing, the passing of anybody to the spirit world, Sherry, don't get me wrong, leaves an enormous hole in our lives. <laughs> but I know if he could plug that hole with his character, his love, his sense of humor, and his mischievousness, he would do his darndest to do that. 
Yes. Because he is Mr. Mischievous here. <laughs> I get the sense that where he, he lived, there was quite a wide road outside of the house. Yes. And you would have memories of him playing, um, I, we would call it Kirby, throw, throwing a ball in it, hitting the curb opposite and with children in the street. Does that make sense, Sherry? Not sure. <laughs> oh, then that street wasn't massively busy. It feels like it is, is there's cars, but there's not major traffic. Yes. And I get the sense when he was younger, he's given me this impression of being able to have that freedom to play outside. Yes. But he also gives me the impression of smelling when his dinner was ready because it was always, um, I don't know if he could always smell it, but I know he always came back for dinner time, even though you didn't call on him. It's like he, he comes comes home and his belly rumbles. <laughs> there is such um there's such a depth here, and I know that there you will have more contact from him, but for today I know the reason that he is here is to bring back the memories of being grateful that he lived, not carrying the weight that he passed. It's remembering to have that gratitude that he lived. As hard as it sounds, that's the words he has for you, Sherry. I don't know how he's going to help you do that, but I know he is. You already have had a feeling. When your son passed, Sherry, you must have felt like you had a visit from him, not in dream state. He did, yes. Please know that was absolutely 100% real. It was not your imagination. You were the first person he wanted to come to and say, I'm okay. Please also know that in that time between him passing, there were there were and a couple of moments I can put it that way. There was no pain, Sherry. There was no pain. Please know that your son is fine and well. If he got up to no good, he's still getting up to no good. But it's with love in his heart. Please take his love, Sherry, and please know that he is very very close to you. Remember. Gratitude for the years you had with him, that will become more and more easy. I'm sure he's going to help you with that. Thank you very much, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. And thank you, Carrie. Okay. I actually feel I have dad here. And I feel like dad too is very recently transitioned to the spirit world. I feel like with dad, you would understand the name Peter, not dad's name, but I do know there's a Peter in the spirit world as well. I also know that dad would have, okay. I get the sense with dad that in, the building he lived in, in the house, there was a large garage or garage, and in there, it's full of his stuff, boxes and um, his collections of things. I'll have a look in there. But I can I see if there's somebody in the audience, Dad moved to the spirit world very recently. You would understand the name Peter in the spirit world and where your dad lived, this large garage of stuff. There's no way a car is getting in there. Thank you, Carrie. All right, friends, who understands this information? Please press your raise hand button.
we're staring at one another, Sandra. Are, no, if are. you say there's no hands, a hand will go up. Absolutely. That's always what happens. <laughs> All right, Carrie, there's no hands. No hands up yet. <laughs> okay. If this isn't dad, I would extend it to father-in-law or stepfather, but I know he would have had a role of father for you. And I know you would understand the name Peter in the spirit world. And I also get this impression that where he lived, he accumulated things is the nicest way I can put it. I do believe somebody is out there trying to muscle up the courage to raise their hand. I agree or thinking, oh, this couldn't be for me. Well, it is. So please, if you can understand this, raise your hand. All right. We have Jane with her hand raised. Carrie. Jan, Jane, if you could press hi. the button. Hi, Jane. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Jane. Hi, hi Carrie. Hi. Do you understand what I've said? What I understand is dad, definitely a Peter in the spirit world. Lots of stuff accumulated which is significant now, but a couple pieces aren't quite right. So your dad didn't transition to the spirit world recently? He didn't. Somebody else did very recently, okay. but not I, him. Okay, but it would be another man? No. Because I know I have two men here, Jane. It is Jane, isn't it? So the... The, the two, my dad and okay. the Peter are in the spirit world, okay. but someone okay. did transition recently, but it wasn't my okay. dad. Okay, let me work with this, Jane, for you then, because I, I only have the two men at the moment. So with your dad, though, this stuff, there was no way anything was getting into this garage. Oh. I, I all, There was a, no way a car was getting in the garage, should I say. But I know there's boxes of things that you would have gone into. And some of those boxes of your dad's would have been there for a lot of years. That's correct. So I have to tell you, it's not the garage. It's someone somewhere else in the house. But that's exactly correct. Oh, it feels like it's not a lived in room, though. You wouldn't that's be able correct. to have the tea or that's a sofa. In. OK, I know that there is. Um, boxes that have had things in it but I know as your dad moved house he's giggling here he would have moved the boxes and he wouldn't have cleared them out they just would have moved with him on each time they moved I know too Jane your dad must have had um a collection of buttons or coins <gasps> Yes. yes. Oh, okay. It feels like military buttons or that you would remember there being a um, military uniform or uniform buttons in this collection. No. Then there must have been, if it were coins, there must have been coins with um, old heads of royalty or, or logos on them. I'm not sure. They were, some were very old. That's correct. Okay. I'm not sure. I, but I know your dad must have um, had some very, very shiny coins in that collection. Yes. Because I can see them, as he shows me this, them um, in some sort of clear envelope that, that they get stored in. But I also know in that, the, the storage room, I'm going to, I've called it a garage, but in that storage room, you would have found um, a whole bunch of stuff from his younger years. Yes. Yes. And you would never have expected, he's given me this impression, to find this stuff related Correct. to that. Correct. Oh, so you're finding out things about him. I know from your dad, there has been this inquiry from you over the years and you have found people that were in the family that you didn't know about. Not sure. No, I don't think so. Then you found out information about other members of the family that you didn't know already. 
that Somewhat, are now, yes yeah yes because I, I know that your dad is giggling here about how he let the cat, cat out of the bag on on areas that were previously kept under wraps I know with um I know with you, I've just got this Peter hollering in. Peter must have had a really rowdy sense of humour. He did. Because I can hear him hollering in from the background. He is not the main communicator here, nor <laughs> will he be. Your dad most definitely is, but I can hear Peter hollering in, just giving a, a, a call out. But I know I also hear Peter calling in saying, all is well, whoever transitioned most recently i know peter is somebody who you would want to keep the energy and the the, the joy there yes 100 I, I, I can i can hear peter shouting out all is well i'm keeping them busy <laughs> i believe it please know too that with your dad the reason peter and your dad are here is to confirm that all is well it's horrible when we lose people to the spirit world it is but they have a party on the other side it doesn't help us one incy wincy little bit but please know that the welcoming party i don't have the person that just crossed with me but i know that the welcoming party was there because you asked them to be there yeah right. and they thank you not have let you down your dad's dog is with him as well uh not a oh there was a dog from a yep, long time your ago your dad's dog is there yeah it's your dad's dog oh my gosh Cause I, okay because i know that the, please know this is very much their way of saying we are here we are doing what we do best this side of life which is to welcome nurture and keep an eye on you guys as well, because I know there's more than just you and um, needs to hear this message. Yes, thanks. Thanks so much, Carrie. That was beautiful. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much, Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Carrie. And it's a shift change in the chair will be Mr. Phil Dice. Hello, Sandra. Fancy Hello. meeting you here. I know. You come here often? I do. Once a week, in fact. Once a week, in fact. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely a pleasure as always to be here and watch Miss McLeod work and to also hear those interactions of the spirit world as well and to see Sandra do all the things that she does in the background for us in a wonderful way for us. So thank you very, very, very much, Sandra. Okay. Okay. Um, no, we've just had you. I've got Peter still hanging with me and I'm just saying, no, 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 you've spoken already. Is he is, is, no, he's just hanging on for a, a little bit. So, okay, that's fine. Um okay uh okay that's just fine there's just a little bit of a to in and fro in with the spirit world ladies and gentlemen while uh, peter just moves to one side for me good okay mm -hmm. all right Somebody's taken advantage of the little kerfuffle. Um, as I become aware of the spirit world, I know here that I've got a husband with me. I know his name is George. And I also feel with George, he's got a real sense of humour. But I also feel with him, he's got a determination and a pa passion and a purpose, like the theme tonight. So I know he could be a very driven man. But I also know this. It just feels where I I, I, I just got, I've got this real sense of humour that... Um, how can I put this? That just keeps people entertained. It's almost like I'm a little bit of a what live wire. And I've got to admit, I can't stop with him. He feels like he's full of energy as well. So I know I should have husband. I feel his name is George, I think I said. And I know he's got this personality to him as well. Thank you very much, Phil. And we have Maggie with her hand raised. Maggie, if you could press your unmute button. Hi, Maggie. Hello. Hello. hello, hello, Maggie. Now, I know you and I have to admit that to everybody. OK, so I've just yeah. realized what's happened. OK, um, and I understand his personality as well with, with your husband. Um, he, he I'm right in saying that he was a very passionate man, though. Absolutely. And it's almost like I want to do 
everything in my ability to do the best that I can. Absolutely. And I also feel with him, he likes to be in charge, or should I say he likes to think he's in charge. <laughs> yes. Okay. But I also feel uh, as well, um, he was somebody that was quite um, methodical because when it came to such things as organization and paperwork, he was quite meticulous when he went through it. He was. And it's almost why I want to store it and keep it and file it or everything in order. Yes, everything is filed. And and I want to say it's not just filed, but it's in alphabetical order. Oh, yes. And do you know those little tabs you get with A, B, C, D? You know, because I know you would yes. have had all of those. And I know they would have been color coordinated as well. Yes, there's those as yeah. well, yes. And I also feel uh, as well, um, he was a man that never really threw anything away either. <laughs> no, he didn't. Because I know there should be a drawer in a desk of his that he had that was full of odd little sods and ends and all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if I also said um, there's pens and things in there or should have been pens. Oh, yeah, there's still pens there, yeah. And I also feel with him that he would have collected pens from different places. <laughs> yes, he did. And do you know when we borrow things but never give them back? yes because i feel the little pens and it's almost like little keepsakes from places we stayed um yeah. and, and there, there must be memories of staying in like b and b's and things like that and we keep those little tokens yes and would i be right as well saying he used to collect fridge magnets as well oh that was me that's you because i know it's not just the pens and things it's the fridge magnets as well he brings to yeah. my mind but i also yeah. feel with george um he was a character that was very popular and very well liked yes but i also feel at times that george didn't always have um a positive mindset there were occasions where life got on the bet on got on top of him Yes. And I also feel with him, it, it's almost where there was a frustration with him about not being able to almost like get on with what he wanted. It's almost like I, how can I choose my words very carefully? It's almost like because of obstacles, I had to go around things, but I never gave up. I always completed. That's very true. That's fine. And, and what I'd be right in saying, um, that he wasn't shy of having a tipple of a drink. <laughs> he loved, yes, that's true. <laughs> but I want to say he knew his wines. Oh, yes. And I want to say you could blindfold him and give him a sniff, not a taste, a sniff, and he'd tell you where it was from. More than likely, yeah. And would I be <laughs> right in saying you would like a good Bordeaux? Oh, absolutely. Because I know here I keep on seeing Bordeaux. I, I, because I know tiny little bits about you, Maggie. I know there's connections to France, but I'm going to leave that there. But I know he takes me with the bottle of wine as well. But I also feel that he must have had either a membership of either a wine club. Oh, no. That's fine. I know you're saying, or oh, no, in that Newcastle accent, that Geordie accent, but I'm going to argue with you a little bit because I can see him with boxes of wine. So I know he would have not collected, but he was partial to the really good stuff. Oh, yes, that's very true. We, we collected and, and we put it in special boxes, yes. That's fine, because I know here it's just, that's why I felt he was in a club, because they only say I see that quantity is in a club sort no. of thing, okay? No. But I'm not saying he's an alcoholic, because I know he's not. He doesn't come across that way. No, he wasn't. But I also feel that George was a very sentimental man, and he would always make sure he gave you cards, like for birthdays, anniversaries, and Christmas, always on time. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to say no to that. Okay. But if I said he was sentimental and he always got you them. Oh, yeah. And yes. you kept them. Yes, I did. Because I know there's a collection of them. If I was wrong, and I, I'm trusting you because you've said no, I also feel that he would have gone overboard to make it up to you as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. And I know he would buy flowers for you in like apology as well 
Ooh, that were rare. <laughs> but he did do it. Yeah. Because I know here he's laughing because he's just said to me, when I get by Kerry flowers, I get accused what I've been up to. So I know <laughs> there's that sense of humour as well. So I'm going to leave his love with you, oh, but you. knowing that he's around you uh, as well. And I want to say either round now there is an anniversary. Yes, there is. Because I know here there's an outpouring of love to you. I'm still with you and I'm still walking by your side as well. So I'm going to leave his love with you and say thank you very, very much, Maggie. Oh, thank you for that lovely You're absolutely evidence. welcome. Thank You're you. absolutely welcome. Cheers. Good. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Phil. Okay. I've still got Peter shouting. Wait a minute, that's fine. Um, or, OK, I've got somebody else. Um, I've also got uh, another gentleman by the name of Peter. Um, and I also know the person I want to be talking to would also under... Uh, bear with me. Um, I nearly fell for that one. I know Peter's got a really good sense of humour. And I actually feel that Peter was in the construction sector. So I know he would have been in that builder's work sort of thing uh, uh, as well, or construction. Um, and I actually feel with Peter that he's either husband... And I actually get the impression with him uh, as well. Um, I know that, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. I know there's something here. It's almost like I want to move around. I know somebody's just put their hand up as well. So can we bring that person in, Stephanie, just for a second? Here we go. All right, Stephanie, if you could press your unmute button. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hello, Stephanie. Do you understand everything I've said? Yes. And do you understand with Peter, he was a bit of a character? Yes. And and it's almost where I've got an answer for everything. <laughs> yes. Because I, I, I get that impression. And it's almost where he has a presence about him. You don't get that either chance or impression to question him. It's almost like I'm on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah, because each time I go back, it's almost like it's too late. I I just need to move on with him. Um, but I I also feel uh, as well um that he was very meticulous in the work he did. Um, yeah. If I said that he did things around the house, but he did them um, obviously he did them well, but he did them very quickly as well. Yes. <laughs> Because I know here, and if I said they weren't finished to the best finish, would you understand? Yes. Because it's almost where I know I can do it, but I know at home I'm completely different. I know on the job he's meticulous, but I know he does things very quickly. And would I also be right in saying he was always helping neighbours out as well? Yes. Because it's almost where I want to, I, I literally can't keep still. I can't hold my thoughts with him. And it's, I'm up, I'm up and down. I'm doing a little bit of this mm -hmm. and a little. It's almost like I've got umpteen different projects on the go. Yeah. Okay. And But I also know I would turn my hand to anything. So I know I would have a go at anything DIY. But I also <laughs> feel that this would go into cars and engines and things. That's sometimes. That's fine. And and would I be right in saying he would bring things home from his work and keep them in the yard? <laughs> yeah. Because, because I can, all of a sudden I can see a little bit of this and a little, I'm, I'm thinking, how do I place this? But I know it's just bits of things from work in the yard and I know they would always come in useful for jobs that I've got to do as well. Mm -hmm. Would I also be right in saying that he worked for himself yes because i actually feel he had repeat customers people that would come always come back to him yes and i also feel with him it's not just he would come back to him for his good work because i know he was good but i also know he did it for a fair price as well that's it yeah <laughs> Because, and again, he's, he's got that philosophy of we do it well, we do it for a fair price, and I know people come back. And I know there's conversations that took place with him where he should have put his prices up, but he never did. Yeah. And Absolutely. I also know that 
with that accumulation of things he brought home and put in the yard, he would often use that without charge because somebody else would pay for it. So I know he kept people's prices low that way as well. Yeah. But it feels where I want to go back to the house with him where he would do things, but I wouldn't always finish them for a period <laughs> of time because I was always helping get everybody else out. And I know that was a little bit of a pain to you, Stephanie. Yeah. OK, but I get the sense here he was a man that always tried to keep his words because I know it, it just feels were. Um... Yep, yep, absolutely. Bear with me one second. Would I also be right, Stephanie, that he was a very sensitive um, man underneath? Yes. And you and him used to have conversations. And I know I joke with Kerry along the lines of who's going first, but you would have done the same with him. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. Sorry, you've gone quiet. You you do or you don't? Yes, I do. You're that good. Okay. And it's almost where you said you were going mm -hmm. first, but he ended up going first. <laughs> because I know here he's apologizing for that. Because I want to say, as he's sentimental, he doesn't like breaking his word to you. And I know here just recently you must have sat at home going through the photographs talking to him. Oh, my God. Yep. yep. And I also know it's not just sat talking to him. It's his way of saying, I see what you do. And it's his way of saying, I'm around you as well. Because I know he was a man, not of many words in where it came to emotions, but he liked to pull you in and hug you as well. <laughs> and yep. do you know what i really love about him when he does things wrong he reminds me of myself he just pulls you in and gives you that hug and he thinks that hug would do it <laughs> yeah and i know i'm looking my wife's just looking at me <laughs> thinking, yeah okay i'm just trying not to look there um but i know here um is, is that sense but i also feel that he was very well loved in the community as well yes and I want to say, would I be right in saying that he liked a little bit of a tipple, a drink as well? Not a drink. <laughs> Not a drink. Bear with me. No, there's something here. Would I be right in saying he would be part of... Um, do, 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 do. He was part of either some social club that had a team. No. Mm, that might be my next contact. OK, mm -hmm. but I know here um, he just comes forward. In fact, no, he's arguing with me. It's, there's something I want to go back a little bit of time with him where there would have been an involvement to do with. In fact, forgive me for one second. I might have made a royal mistake here. Would I be right in saying you have a grandson, Stephanie? Oh, no, no. Then I'm not with you. I've moved on. I'm going to leave that just for a second. Then I'm just going to let him come back and come in. So I know here he just makes me aware of his love for you, not sorting things out. And I also get the impression where there's some work in the house still not finished that he never completed. Yes. And I know you look at it and, and sometimes wonder. But if I said this particular part, you don't want it doing. You want it as it is now. Because yep. there's a sentimental value. Yeah. <laughs> because I know here he's rubbing his hand on it and saying it just needs a little bit, but I know we'll finish it off in good time, not just yet. I'm going to leave his love with you and say thank you very much for allowing me to do that, Stephanie, um, yeah. because I know I've got somebody else pushing me to work as well. So I'm going to just go with that now. That's OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Phil. OK, I feel like I've got um, a gentleman with me. I do feel it's another husband. I actually feel um, that it's a case of he would have had dealings with it. It's some kind of social club that had sports teams. And, and it's almost like he, if he didn't manage, he was involved with that team, that club as well, because it's just this impression here. And it feels like it was part of a community based club. And it feels where I want to be either going down into the southern hemisphere or that way. I know where I'm, I'm, I'm I've got that heat around me as well. So I've got that impression here. 
So somebody would understand husband in the spirit world and would have had an involvement in some kind of social sports club. And I know he would have either managed part of that club in the way where children or teams were concerned. Thank you, Phil. All right, friends, who understands that information? Raise your hand, please. If I'm wrong with husband, I'll change the relationship, but I don't want to change the evidence. If I can help that. No hands up just yet, Phil. Mm -hmm. Then I'm just going to have a look at what it is, because I know I've definitely got a gentleman. I can't change that. I know there's an involvement with a, a surf, in fact, not a circle, a social club. Um, but I, I do feel I want to be in either Australia. If he didn't manage it, I know he was part of it in some way, shape or form. Who does this make sense to or think it may, might make sense to you? Raise your hand, please. Sophia's got her hand raised. Sophia, if you could press your unmute button, please. Hi, Sophia. Hello. Um, Hello. Hello, Sophia. What do you understand of what I've said? Uh, there's something to do with a sports club um, and that he uh, assisted in managing. Um, okay. And this was your I, husband? I, this was my husband. And yeah. um, I'm not in Australia. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah that, 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 um, don't say any more let me work there because i know here that there's just something i knew i'd gone wrong with because my mind was impressed towards something and i've seen that in australia so that's my mind creeping in but i know he was part of a social club that's to do with sports yes yeah i wouldn't call it a social club it was a sports club okay but I, I know that in fact there's a social side to it do you understand yes yes That's yes fine. yes because i know here it's not just a, a club where i have a passion and purpose for i know that but i know there's a big social scene to it as well where it is yes. more just a that's fine because i know he's very passionate about it and yes. i also know with your husband he knew what he thought and what he thought was right as well Yes. Okay. Because I know it's just that mindset where I've made a mistake. He, it's almost like he, he knew what he meant and just the way that he is. So I'm getting a lot of feedback here, Sophie. So just bear with me. But with your husband, would it be right in saying that um, he was very passionate about what he did? Yes. And it's almost this sense of um, how can I sort this feedback out? I'll pass you that if you can sort that out. Um, he was not just passionate about what he did. He he was quite inspirational to that team and that club. I, I'm sorry, what? He was quite inspirational towards that club, that team. He, he inspired yes, I... people. It's almost like he was very well liked, very popular. Yes, he was very well liked and popular. That's fine, because it feels like I, I'm I'm still remembered today and still talked about as well. So I know there's still that feeling with him. But I also get with your husband um, that he was a man that liked to be quite social as well. Yes. And I also want to say there was never a dull moment with him between you and him. There was always that interaction. Yes. And it's it's almost like he wasn't just your husband. He was your best friend because you would talk about everything. Yes. Um, and it's all it's that impression I want to say. And it's almost like nothing's ever too much of a, a bother for him where you're concerned. So I know you would ask him to do and he would just do it anyway. Yes, exactly. And, I, and if I would also say he was quite thoughtful, he's going to put me to shame here, he would always think in advance, he knew what you liked, and he always tried to prepare for it as well. Yes, he did. Um, and I, I get the impression with him, he's quite emotionally free with you, so he would share his feelings and share his look. Yes, absolutely. And, and he wasn't frightened of saying to you, I love you. He said it every day. Because I know this is something that he would do. You've given me that he would do it every day. Because it's important, I tell you, 
and I need to tell you now I love you still and I love you tomorrow and the day after and I can feel a whale of a, a, a wave of emotion coming forward um and and again you're another young lady that talks to the photographs as well yes because <laughs> I know yes. you've told the photograph today I love you yes and I know you should have kissed it as well yes because he says I was there at that moment and I will be there at every moment going forward. And I know you've had those thoughts when you go, will he be there? He says, yes, 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 but not for a long time yet. Okay, okay yes. I, 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 know, I know you do. Um, I also get the impression you keep either a little box with these either um, cufflinks in and things. Yes. And and, and it's more than just cufflinks. There's like little badges and things in there as well. Yes. And and would I be right in saying you've kept hold of some of the badges for that sports club? Uh, I, I I don't know of them right Bear with now. Me. Bear with me. Just, okay. I also believe that in his youth as well, he was quite sporty and he would have played for teams himself. Oh, definitely, yes. But I know there should be badges or pins, they call them, where, um, how can I put this? Badges or pins where, um, from those yesteryears to do with those sports teams and clubs. I don't know for sure. I suppose there I, are. Bear with me. And what I'd be right in saying he's kept one, you've kept one or two of his trophies? Uh, no, I don't know. You know, you're going to hate what I'm about to say to you. He says, when you remember, you're going to email me and let me know because I can see a trophy. So I know okay. what I'd be writing saying there's also boxes or keepsakes that you still have of his. Oh, yes. Because I know they're in there as well. So I know he's bringing my mind to that to, uh, as well. Um, would I also be writing saying there's a birthday on the 14th of a month? Um. Uh, not that I know of. The 14th, no. No, 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 no. I want to go to the 14th of May. The 14th of May keeps on repeating within my mind. So I know here there's a significant date around the 14th. It's not to come as in a prediction, but I know it's an anniversary date. And I do feel it's a birthday as well. So I can't change that. He was pretty good with his dates and he was pretty good being organized as well. He's better than I am. Exactly. Yeah. So I know here he's correcting you, so he's not changing it. OK, yes. I know he's here to let you know he's by your side because he's letting me know that you've not felt that positive just recently. And that's why he's come forward, just to inspire you as well. OK, yes, thank you. And exactly. Keep, I want to say keep on talking to him, keep on interacting with him because he's always there. Um, would I also be right in saying you've kept his favourite um, mug or cup as well? Yes, I do have it. I know, because he says sometimes you pick it up as well. So I know here he's just making me aware of how much he's around you. I'm going to leave his love with you and say thank you very much for allowing me to do that, Sophia, and making me work so hard in the beginning. But it's important I got to the right person. I'm going to leave your husband's love and just let you know that love is immense still from him every day. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. You're welcome, Sophia. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand you back over to the Miss Wonderful, Wondrous, Miss Sandra Champlain. Wonderful and wondrous. Oh, just we're just mirrors for our, each other. Ladies and gentlemen, just press a raise hand button just in appreciation of Carrie and Phil. They volunteer their time with us today and every time they're here on our Sunday gathering and the demonstrations over the years we've been together. There's been more than a thousand loved ones that have been able to come through to people all over the world. We never knew when COVID hit that things would be happening online, but it's really a blessing because I think for many of us, we wouldn't get to see Carrie and Phil live and in person. So you two have really made a difference. Thank you so much. 
and to our members of our community here. I know so many hearts are heavy with grief. A couple of things. One, on Thursday, our friends Kath and Mitch Shirley are doing a free grief cafe. They are advanced grief recovery specialists. You may enjoy that. And also, if you do not already have a copy of my book, you are free to have one. Um, chapter 10 is all about grief and why it hurts so bad, things we can do to feel better and move through it. And if you've ever purchased anything through the wedontdie.com site, you have a personal library. There's a copy in there already for you. If you have not, just go to the main page at wedontdie.com. Towards the bottom of the page, just enter your name and your email address. Yeah, it'll put you on our mailing list. But also, you'll get a pop-up that will lead you to a link uh, for my book, which is called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Carrie and Phil's site is mymediumship.com. They teach online through we don't die.com also, but also they have other specialty courses there and you can visit with them live. They're coming to New Mexico, in the US, they'll be in England and Canada, Ontario, Canada. So it's really lovely to take a course with them. Our course is already underway that just started a couple of weeks ago. It's never too late to join. There is magic. There truly is when you learn how spirit communication works and when you just try and trust in one of our breakout rooms and you never know what you think is your imagination is really a loved one you're either working um, psychically in our medium level one course and you also work psychically in our medium class but instead of soul to soul humans you're working with someone in the spirit world so if you're brand new and you want to join us we always recommend medium level one everything's guaranteed lowest price classes around filled with integrity and they're the very best of the best. So that's Carrie and Phil at mymediumship.com. What else do I want to say? Uh, not too much. I would say our we don't die.com is our home base for everything. There's been several of you who have donated to our Sunday gathering. We appreciate it so much. We never ask, we don't pass around the plate or put up a QR code, but if you are somebody who's interested, it does help us keep things going. You can go to the Sunday gathering page at wedontdie.com if you'd like to do that. I just wanna give a couple of words for the week before our closing prayer. And it really is to be on the court. Each and every week, there's a topic that we have on our Sunday gatherings. And I'm sure we entertain you a bit. You love to hear the stories. I'm sure you do. And the demonstrations as well. As well. But then what happens to the rest of the week? Do you remember? Do you put any of these things in action? Like I said, when I did my impossible promise back in 2002, by me making that declaration, I have a sneaky suspicion that God, the universe, the spirit world, whoever said, okay, friends, she's ready. And then in came so many special things and so many special people. The spirit world will work with you, but not for you, if you get my drift. We need to put action in the direction of our dreams. And they're just waiting, like, like when you put up a sail in a sailboat, right? You need the wind. So we've got to put up the sail to allow the wind to happen. Whatever you might have learned or investigated for yourself or been inspired by with our Sunday gathering. Like I said, who are you? Who have you already been being? What have you been doing? What is your passion? I'm just asking you to take one step in that direction of your dream, even if it is to identify who you are and you never know what mighty force will come fill your sails and the synchronicities that happen and the people that you meet. And just like the story that I read, there's this unseen world around you that just wants to participate, but they need to know we're serious about it. So be entertained by our Sunday gathering if you'd like, but there's special bonus features for you if you get involved. All right, so that is it. I'm going to pass it over to my friends for the closing prayer. Thank you, Sandra, for those wonderful words and, and that are inspire us and keep, them going, keep us going for the coming week. But it's that time to go into prayer where we can send our own prayers to that great unseen world, to that God that we believe in, or whatever you believe the source of life is, to inspire your life, to make it truer, fuller, with more purpose. So join me in prayer. 
great infinite spirit we sit within your joy within your love this evening but it's not just for this evening it's for every day that we live our lives so our lives may be full of passion and purpose but also allowing that love to ooze from us to other people that we meet within this life we thank everybody that's here on this Sunday gathering and may a blessing be bowed and put upon their heads for this coming week to help them inspire self and others that they meet. It is with that thought as always, Father, as we're always connected to one and each other, that we leave this love around us. Amen. Thank you so much, Phil. And thank you, Carrie. Always a delight to be with you. And to our friends and families here that are joining us, thank you. And of course, our friends in the spirit world, we love you. We are a family. As we go into our closing song now, we've talked about purpose. We've talked about passion. We've talked about, or heard the song, getting stronger. Well, what's left to do is just be brave. So here is Sarah Varelis with Brave. So that's it. We left you with a little homework. Go be brave. Go live life full out. We love you. We're always here for you. Thank you again. Mwah. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.